We are back. Andrew Capone, who's got the action. Caleb Knight taking a stand. Caleb, it's been a fun journey. A lot of weeks, a lot of races. Final leg of the Triple Crown here. We have no Triple Crown opportunity this year. But uh, what did you think of that Preakness race and early voting race and, and the idea that he's going to pass the Belmont here and point to something at the, in Saratoga this summer? It has been fun, Andrew. I'm, I'm glad we were able to do this for a while. It was a fun Triple Crown season. I think the early voting ran a really nice race in the Preakness. I thought he went out there and showed a little bit of a new dimension sitting off of a speed horse and being able to kick clear in the stretch. And I thought it ran a really nice race. The connections were rewarded for being a little bit patient and skipping the Derby and early voting ran a big race. I know there's a lot of comments about the ride that Joel Rosario put on Epicenter that day. I think a lot of that criticism is warranted. That was not probably one of his finer rides. And I kind of think he wishes he had that one back, but that's horse racing. Things happen and uh, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Take nothing away from early voting who ran a great race. I think it's not really surprising to me that he skips the Belmont. This is the horse and the connections that skip the Kentucky Derby in order to target the Preakness. These are not the kind of folks who are going to get caught up in the emotions of the sport and go chasing after spots that don't make sense for their horse. I think they want to give early voting some extra time off. And I'm looking forward to seeing him come back in the summer, maybe at Saratoga. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. I thought early voting, I got a hell of a value on my pick there. Um, nice little price to score. I think that board was a little messed up. I, I don't know what exactly happened there. But we have a nice card this coming Saturday. Uh, Belmont Stakes, 154th running, 11, race number 11 of 13, with a card that is interesting to say the least. Some shorter fields, but very competitive fields at that. One and a half miles on that big sandy dirt, 6.44 p.m. post time. We'll start off here with the number one horse, We the People. We the People won the first two races at Oaklawn, putting him on the Derby Trail for the Arkansas Derby, where he didn't do much running. He was very washed before the race, ran wide, wide, came back, had 42 days rest, saw again some distance there at the Great Deep Japan, and uh, put together a pretty nice race, winning a ride 10. Um, any tightness in the track with a little moisture, which we are expecting this coming weekend at, at Belmont, we should see a, a nice pace and, and setup for him. Last week, fires a 47 and a half, going easily over four furlongs. This horse is uh, the speed of the group and two, three for five lifetime. Has a chance of going and just not getting caught. Similar to what I thought early voting was going to do. Changed the tactics a little bit last week. But uh, I think this horse is the speed of the speed and has a good chance of just going and nobody catching up. Two to one is short, but the rail is 53% on two turn races at Belmont. And we do see 55% of horses going wire to wire. So I think the bias is definitely an advantage. Um, the only draw with this horse is I, I don't know who he's beaten yet, but that should be something we'll see uh, this coming Saturday. Definitely horse I'm going to be using on my tickets. What was your thought here of uh, the number two, Skippy Longstocking, coming out of that last week's race, uh, two weeks ago race, and uh, Ed DeRosa's pick? Yeah, Skippy Longstocking. I think that. Uh... Again, just the best named horse in the field. I'm just a big, very partial to this horse's by his name. But unfortunately for our good friend Ed DeRosa, I don't think this is a horse that I would give too much chance to, especially not on the win side of things. I think this is a horse that has really done his best running at Gulfstream. Hasn't really been able to replicate that form whenever he left Gulfstream. Pedigree suggests that longer is better for him. I mean, he's by Exaggerator, who was second in the Kentucky Derby, won the Preakness. But this horse has kind of just run even in the two starts at a mile and an eighth and a mile and a three, three sixteenths last out. He was an okay third in the Wood Memorial with no, no real threat to Mo Donegal or early voting, but was well clear of the rest of the field. And then he came back in the Preakness and didn't disgrace himself. He ran an even fifth, it was never a threat to any of the top couple of horses in there, but he beat some of the other no hopers that finished up the track a little bit. So this is a horse that I think his best chance might be the fact that there's really no speed in here with the exception of We the People. Maybe Manny Franco can take up a stalking position behind a slow pace and just kind of run a better race than he's probably capable of or really rather than he should run just if the pace dynamics favor him. Uh, he might get first run and be lucky to hold on for a minor award, but that's probably the ceiling for this horse. Next, I think we have Nest, the Philly taking on the boys here. Any love for Nest in this spot, Andrew? A little bit of love here. Um, two Phillies have won the Belmont Stakes, and one of them was trained by Todd Pletcher. Jose Ortiz gets the mount here for Todd. Uh, Curlin Baby here. Um, in the Kentucky Oats, Nest ran a, a very impressive second to Secret Oath, who I think is a, a very impressive horse. Um, Curlin 
Curlin is their sire, AP Indy on the damn side. Um, has that late kick, so should be running late. The real question is, can the horse stay close enough to the boys here? Um, I think we're, we're going to see We the People get out pretty far in front, um, and I, I don't know if Nest is necessarily going to have that drive, that drive and desire to really try to run him down late. Uh, saw Todd Petrich today on the back stretch, was confident in the horse, but he said something I found very interesting. He said he can't change your horse's running style. Um, so he, he was definitely aware that he thinks We the People was going to be out there, and Nest might be up against it. Um, so we'll move on to the four horse here, our uh, 2022 Kentucky Derby winner, Rich Strike. Doesn't that just sound funny coming out of your mouth? But uh, that's the world we live in. Uh, 80 to 1 Kentucky Derby winner, Rich Strike, skips the Preakness because uh, connections say that they thought he had a better chance at the Belmont with the extra distance. Pimlico kind of more reputation as a speed favor in track. I think most folks who talk to you about Rich Strike fall into one of two very distinct camps. You have the got the trip of a lifetime dream kind of set up and just absolutely even refused to consider him and probably any other great stakes race for the rest of his career. And, and then you have the, you know, public that love to see the upset and the bomb and they're probably make the source, you know, a lot shorter of a price than he should be just because of his name reputation and the fact that everybody loves an underdog. And I guess for me, I, I sort of fall somewhere in between. I, I think the sharp players are probably giving this horse a little bit too much of a hard time because you know, some of his synthetic form really wasn't that bad. He did have good dirt form at Churchill you know, way back when. And although some of the casuals are certainly going to overbet him relative to his chances to win here. He's going probably from as much of an opposite pace scenario as he got in the Kentucky Derby. It's hard to think of one being more opposite than what he faces on Saturday in the Belmont. There, there's just no real speed in here besides we the people. He is not going to get those crazy fractions to run after. I don't think this horse could really be much more forwardly placed, even if even if they wanted to. I mean, clearly he's a one-run deep, deep closer here. I do think this horse will run better than you know some folks may expect. I don't think he's going to run you know last or anything, but I do think that with the likely uh, racing flow and pace dynamics, he he's probably more likely to finish somewhere around fourth, in my opinion, maybe third if he's lucky. So probably not a horse I'd be looking to use on top, but but a horse that I wouldn't totally discount for the minor awards. That takes us to number five, Creative Minister, a horse that did not run in the Derby, but will be making his third start since the Derby as he ran in an allowance card or allowance race on the undercard. So what do you think of him, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, this this horse is uh, sort of a, a, a odd duck here. Um, really came late onto the onto the trail. Short career, but not a short horse. Um, very, very late, I should say, onto the, the, the trail. Third in the Preakness a few weeks back. Two for four lifetime and has always hit the trifecta. Um, the short career is tight on time, and can we see the horse step forward again and again? It keeps on stepping forward, but that, that tight time really hard. It's hard for the horse to keep growing over such a short period. Hasn't really gotten much work in. Um, I spoke to McPeak this morning on the back stretch. Um, said he's been training really well. Horse galloped a mile this morning. Uh, changing leads just okay on those big wide turns at Belmont Park. A lot of horses uh, take a little bit of time to adjust that Belmont track the turds are very wide um the horse does have to change these a number of times uh mcpeak has won this race before at big sandy so he, he is used to this and he knows how to train for him needs to step forward again and take on the distance uh so this horse is really a toss-up for me not necessarily a toss i don't know what i'm going to do yet but it, in a number of my exactas i'll have i'll use the horse underneath but not on top um which moves us to the horse number six here the other todd pletcher modonagle yeah, Mo Donegal is a horse I like a lot in here. He's a horse I've always thought was a very talented colt, and uh, I think he's one that a lot of folks sort of had pegged as their Belmont horse way back earlier in the spring uh, after he was running in the Remsen and even in the uh, Holy Bull in the Wood. I thought that his Kentucky Derby race was fine. I mean, he broke from the rail. Uh, that's always a tough ask, even with the new starting gate. That's just always a tough position to be in. You get shuffled back. You get pinched into the fence. And I think the, the key difference between Mo Donegal and Rich Strike is that when there were some times to make some key decisions as far as to stay inside, to go outside, and Sonny Leon, to his credit, made all the right decisions on uh, Rich Strike and stayed inside, saved enough ground to just get the job done. Whereas Irad Ortiz, I mean, from I'm not saying he made the wrong decision, but it just didn't work out for him when he decided to tip out wide and just lost a ton of ground coming out of that turn. So for me, I typically kind of disregard the Kentucky Derby a lot of times when I'm doing handicapping just because it's the only time 
that many of these horses are ever going to be in a 20 horse field going a mile and a quarter. So I thought Mo Donegal had a great race in the wood. That was a race where early voting did have the lead relatively to himself against fractions that were modest. I mean, not fast by any stretch. And Mo Donegal made a really nice run to actually come from well off the pace and get the job done against a horse that we now know is very talented as he came back to win the Preakness. So for me, I think that Mo Donegal is a horse that has kind of proven he can overcome a disadvantage pace scenario and probably do it against better horses than what he's catching here today. So this is a horse that I do like a lot in here. I think he wants every inch of a mile and a half where some of these other ones I'm not quite as sure about. And he will need to either be a little more forwardly placed or to get maybe a little bit better racing luck or a little more of an aggressive ride. But uh, he's the horse in here that I, I really do like in this spot. I think we have two horses left, the first of which is number seven, Golden Glider, Andrew. Yeah, Golden Glider, interesting little horse here. Um, Mark Cassie with Dylan Davis in the Irons. Although Cassie has success in the Belmont in the past, I'm going to have to toss this horse here. Um, winner in Canada is a two-year-old uh, against nothing to write home about. Uh, no horses from that race have really come back to show much. Um, hasn't shown much success in stakes company with a pair of superfectas and uh, that fifth, that tiring fifth it had. Figures did regress in the last race. Uh, they aren't where they need to be to make a step forward here. I think that's going to be really hard to do. We the people beat by 10 last time out in the Peter Pan. Um, this horse just I'm not going to waste much time on it. I'm not very impressed here. Um, I think this horse is one that you can leave off pretty much all your tickets coming into this coming Saturday. So why don't you round out the field here with the sixth place derby finisher, Barbara Road. Yeah, Barber Road. You, you have to like this horse a little bit just because he tries so hard. Mm -hmm. he, he's such a trier. And I know people say that about horses and it feels so cliche. But this is a horse that just always goes out there and gives it his all. He, he's generally passing most of the field. He was dead last at the start of the Kentucky Derby and got up for sixth in a race that certainly came back to the closers. But, you know, if you like Mo Donegal, I mean, there's an argument to be made that you have to at least give a look to Barber Road as they pretty much had identical trips in the Kentucky Derby and there was only about a length that separated the two of them at the finish line. Now, I do think Mo Donegal is finishing up a little bit better than Barber Road, who seems to be a bit more of a plotter. And looking back at some of Barber Road's previous form at Oaklawn doesn't exactly give a ton to be inspired by. I do think this is a horse that maybe has outrun his pedigree a little bit. Uh, he doesn't necessarily seem to be one who's bred to want to go this far, but he has certainly been uh, coming on strong in pretty much all of his races late. John Ortiz decides to take the blinkers off in this spot, a move that he is 38% uh, with over the past three years. So that's something to be optimistic about. Maybe the hood comes off, allows the horse to get into more of his natural rhythm, as well as putting up Joel Rosario, who just seems to be the one jockey that we'd all expect to get a horse like this to show up with a big race. So to me, I don't think this horse can win, but I do think this is one of those really likely horses that's going to clunk up for third or fourth in, uh, you know, at probably a more than fair price. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I thought the same with Barbara Road, and there's actually some uh, really good videos out there of talking to him about taking those, uh, taking the hood off and the blinkers, and, and a little bit about the horses have been training with it and still showing the same type of form. So blinkers come off here. I saw that stat, very nice percentage when he takes them off. So I'm excited to see what Barbara Road can do. Definitely going to be using underneath, especially in third place in my effect is. Um, for me, is going to be We the People. I know I'm a chalk eating weasel, and I, I did get some good value in the uh, in the Preakness with early voting. I'm going to lose that value here and go with We the People, who I do think will go off at second favorite. I do not think it was going to go off favorite. I think the horse is going to go off at second favorite here, somewhere in the five to two, three to one range. Um, <clears throat> Peter Pam, Peter Pam was just super impressive to me. Um, really showed heart there. Has the win on this track with a little bit of moisture, which we expect this Saturday. The extra one eighth shouldn't be an issue at all. Uh, only speed here and has that inside golden rail, which just keeps on coming on those two turn races. Runs that same Peter Payton ra pan race. I don't think it has to step forward too much. Um, Pratt up looking for his uh, triple triple crown career here, um, getting that Belmont stakes. I think this course goes and just keeps on going. I modeled it out today. I think we're going to be four lengths ahead at second call. I think that's going to be very tough to glow, close into. Um, Two to two to one is short. Again, I do think we're going to get closer in the five to two, three to one area. But I'm really, really going to drive, try to drive all my value into this play 
in a two-day daily double, which there is, I believe, five of on this coming Saturday's card. So there are some good value there in those daily doubles, uh, those multi-day daily doubles. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen here. Uh, again, the horse is short. I don't like eating chalk, but I do think this horse just has the speed that goes, and there hasn't been anybody in this race that that's really shown to go get him. Uh, who's your top pick here for the Belmont? Yeah, I wish I could come up with something that's a little more creative, but – to, to me, I, I don't see a bomb necessarily winning this race, but I did end up on a different horse than you. Uh, the number six, Mo Donegal, would be my pick in here. I think that that Wood Memorial is probably the best piece of form that any horse in this race owns, and that's including Rich Strikes and probable Kentucky Derby win. I thought that uh, Mo Donegal just ran an excellent, excellent race in the Wood. Uh, on certain sets of figures, that race has come back extremely quickly. Uh, on others, that's a little more average, but that has clearly proven to be a live race, regardless of your opinion of the speed figure at the time, as early voting obviously came back to win the Preakness. Skippy Longstocking came back to run respectively enough in the Preakness. So I think that that race is, uh, has been a strong race. I'm basically kind of drawing a line through the Kentucky Derby. It's just such a odd race for so many horses that just don't get the right trips and don't really handle the, you know, the going or the pace or the draw or whatever else, the crowds. So I'm kind of just tossing that race. He didn't do anything that would really make me upgrade or downgrade him necessarily off of that effort. I think this is a horse that wants a mile and a half more than maybe any other horse in this field. And I think he will be a little bit closer. I don't think he's going to be quite as far back as he was in the Derby or, or even in the wood, perhaps, because this is a smaller field and there really isn't much other pace. So he might just kind of find himself sitting fourth or fifth by default. So I think that Mo Donegal is my pick in here. You know, Pletcher can get the job done when it comes to the Belmont. So I think Mo Donegal is sitting on a nice race. I like the fact that he skipped the Preakness. is coming into this race a little bit fresh. And he's going to be my pick in here to win, win the Belmont. Okay, so two opposite sides of the spectrum. One way out in front and one out the back. We'll see what's going to happen here. Either somebody's going to get caught in quicksand out front or uh, you're going to might be out the back and staying out the back. So we'll see what's going to happen here. It's, it's, it's an interesting race, to say the least. Small field, um, interesting pace dynamic setting up with really just one speed horse. As I said before, my focus is going to be driving value from the two-day daily double. The one I'm going to be focusing on is the Belmont Gold Cup Belmont Stakes double with two contenders shipping across, from across the pond. Race, eight, number fr uh, race number eight Friday and race number 11, the Belmont Stakes on Saturday. Four of four over the last five years because of COVID, we did not have one, have been European Invaders. Loft one, <clears throat> Loft is the first half of the German Invaders who showed a lot of promise. The only winner last time out of this field of eight. Loves the distance. They ship in the riders here. You convert the, fig, the European figs to American fig, which never is a perfect conversion. Um, definitely puts the horse right there and, and pretty close to uh, being the best of the field. The second horse I'm going to focus on here is also a German invader. Um, gets Holly Doyle here. Ships in as well. Outbox. Hung last time out at one and a half miles. I think this extra two furlongs here is really going to suit the horse well. Um, I think you can pick up some value here on this two-day. Again, I think the Derby's going to chalk out, whether it be We the People or your pick, Modonigo. I think you really need to focus on getting money into the pools going uh, get, get your value going into that Belmont, already getting it in an earlier race. Um, this is my two-day daily double loft. Outbox over uh, into We the People. Did you have a two day play? I do, but unfortunately, it's incredibly similar to yours. <laughs> I think when it comes to the Belmont Gold Cup, the Europeans are typically just better than the Americans. They've won the last four runnings of this race, although it's been from a different country in Europe each time. So maybe I think that uh, I, I might just try to get a little bit skinnier in there, and I'm just just going to use Loft. I do respect Outbox, but. That's also a horse that I have a bit of a hard time getting behind just because he's, he's not the most consistent sort. He kind of ran a stinker last time out at Newberry without a whole lot of obvious excuse. So you know, for me, his race two back was excellent and three back was excellent, but he is a horse that's kind of known to run some, uh, some questionable races. So I, I'm sure I'll use this horse in pick fives and whatnot. But for a double where I'm trying to really just be a little more narrow, I'm just going to use the number one horse loft. Uh, these are the same connections that – Pulled off the upset last year at the ARC with 72-1 to 1 winner, Torquid or Tasso. Uh, same jockey, same trainer. This is a horse also that really likes a little bit of cut in the ground. They're calling for some rain between now and Saturday. So if the turf comes up good or maybe even yielding, I think that Loft would have no problem at all handling that. 
He's coming in this race in good form. You know he gets the distance as he just has a, a group two win in Germany at two miles. And he's very consistent. He kind of always shows up with his race. I think it's a fair to question maybe what he's beating over there in Germany, but I'm not really afraid of Outbox and I'm not really afraid of any of the Americans. So I'm going to key number one loft into Mo Donegal for my Gold Cup Belmont Stakes uh, double. Well, there you have it. This is the final video of Road to the Derby 2022. We ask you to like and subscribe. That way you get updates on all the HR and content coming out this week. We'll be back at Saratoga this coming summer with a various programs, whether it be daily programs on races, Saturday stakes races, and some insight from backstretch from trainers, jockeys, agents, and alike. Thanks and good luck this weekend.